All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome uh, to the program this morning. Uh, here with me, we have the Conduit for Commerce co-founders. We have Mr. Joe Man Maynard and Brenda Vassar-Taylor. Guys, it's great to have you guys on again, obviously. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Good to be here. Yeah, rare guests. Uh, yeah, rare, rare guests, but certainly, you know, uh, we talk a whole lot, uh, the three of us do. Um, but the Conduit for Commerce scorecard uh, was released yesterday, and... What do you guys think of it? I mean, let's just start with you, Joe. What do you think of it? Well, it's always a challenge to find a way to communicate to people what the legislature the legislature did in their name. Mm -hmm. And no one will be happy with the method or the results. Uh, if they're not going to be happy with the conduit, they're not going to be happy with any results we ever get, right? Yeah. We saw that you know, in the last scorecards. But I think it's a very fair representation of the values that we think are important and that we've been consistent on since day one, some I don't know, eight years ago. So we have tried to remain consistent and vote or rate the votes that these legislators produce because that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. They come and talk to their county committees and their, their voters and their districts and they say this, they say that, but there's only one thing that matters and it's what, how they vote. Mm -hmm. And that's how we do the scorecard is what are the impacts in the various areas that, that we are concerned with and that we feel are the most important for ultimate freedom and liberty and advancement of the state. Yeah, and, and, it's, and it's a snapshot really also of where we are as a state as well. Unfortunately. Um, yeah. What do you think, Brenda? What was your reaction when you saw the scores and the bills that were scored? Well, they're always the, the votes of the legislators. They're not our opinion. Conduit's opinion is uh, based on, you know, the, the bills that we choose to score. And so we choose the bills that reflect good small business policy or would be bad for small business. And looking at um, when government spends more, freedoms for the individual are less. And so looking at it from that, that lens, we chose the bills. I think there are 27, uh, 26 scored altogether. And with various weights, as I think that uh, Josh described yesterday, mm -hmm. but people are going to disagree with our results. But they, if they want to disagree with that bill does not affect small business in the way that you argue, that's where we have our disagreement. But the fact that a legislator voted a certain way is on record. Yeah. And so what we have here is we have a super, uh, I guess, a super majority Republican legislature. And uh, really, no one got much higher than, uh, uh, well, 80% was the cutoff, you know, because of the Ronald Reagan rule. Um, if there had been more, I think, uh, of those legislators get 80 or above, I don't think we would have seen uh, the tax increases, the revenue that's, that's taken from the people. Well, that's antithetical to everything that they promise the voters when they get elected. You've heard them talk at committee meetings or just in public in general doing interviews they espouse these these general principles that sound good and resonate with people and they believe that they can disconnect that from their votes and in, in many cases they really can because they come back to the county committee and say i did a b and d but they don't mention the c they did out outweighed the a b and d combined uh, they grew government more with the one vote than they did with the three good ones and they and they will always point at the three good ones yeah and anybody who actually has the temerity to to point out a committee vote for example that killed school choice or something else that they claim to champion and then they vote against in committee thinking no one will ever really know or they have a ready-made talking point that they've all agreed that we can't do that because of x y or z or mm -hmm. it had a bad thing in it or the, the you know that would decimate the budget of the you know the biology teachers of america or just whatever yeah. they come up with yeah that they can live with themselves for it, it also seems like it's uh there, there's a lot uh, it's a clear policy now f that you can't have any sort of revenue reduction without finding a revenue increase somewhere else right well i think that that's what we're seeing played out in our legislature and in our the promotion of what the governor wants but 
our citizenship, the voter, voters of Arkansas, elected a 75% majority. I mean, we have a super majority, or 75% more or more, in both houses, and yet we have blue policies. You know, these are pro- more progressive policies. Conduit in scoring the votes, uh, we supported 27 bills over a 12-week cycle. Each week would put out, you know, these are the bills that we would support. Was it only 12 weeks? It feels longer than that. I know, (laughs) really. And and in that, we supported 27 of the bills, and uh, one-third of those passed. Hmm. Now, when I look at the bills and and went over the ones that I liked, I I chose 13 bills. 30% of those passed. So a 33% or a 30% pass rate on what we would consider you know, limited uh, government, economic yes, freedom filter. Does absolutely. it grow government, spend money we don't have, increase dependency on government, those types of things? I mean, we have a blue policy state. That's all you can conclude. Well, when you have this super majority you speak of, I mean, what what is it going to take? I mean, they say, well, you can't change it overnight. Well, baloney. 2010. You can change it overnight if you have, you know, the will. Yeah. And evidently it's been, you know, my take on it is, to participate in the largesse of government is a preferable outcome once you've seen what it is than sticking with principles and fighting hard for them against very vocal leftist opposition. Mm-hmm. Now, that's hard, but that's what they claim that they're willing to do if you vote for them. Yeah. But then they quickly find out this is a lot better career move if I just get in with a herd and if we all resist the detractors such as conduit you know, if we can all hate them and and call them uh, it's funny I, every time we're mentioned in any newspaper it always starts out with ultra right wing as written by you know, john brummett conservatives max, max brantley yeah i mean uh, real liberals but they say ultra well that you'll see that same language used like conduit is extreme by the republicans mm-hmm. well name one thing that we support that is extreme i mean we didn't bring an agenda to the table 10 years ago we saw an agenda that we believed in asked that already Pe- existed. That already existed and yes. has re- existed since the founders. Yes. And said, how can we help you implement this when they weren't the majority? And we were asked to, to do these things, mm-hmm. read bills, help us get a few more, you know, yeah. Republicans elected. Mm-hmm. And, and, okay, well, do you want us to tell you what you want to hear or do you want us to tell you what the bill says that you're voting for? And we quickly found out that when when given the choice between staying with the herd and ensuring their futures that they would rather disbelieve what the words on a piece of paper say and they would vote against it and take i mean you know as well as i do oh yeah you know it ends it yeah yeah definitely i mean they want to believe by it the ends way it. somebody call me if medicaid expansion has ended uh you can, you can call us, 870-275-9799. Uh, we're talking today on the program uh, with Conduit for Commerce co-founders, Joe Maynard, Brenda Vassar-Taylor. You mentioned the – Joe mentioned just a second ago the, the resistance, that if you stick to these principles and let's say government were actually to say the same size or it were to shrink – I mean, I'm being a little too optimistic here, but if it were to actually shrink, you'd have to stand up to a, uh, a media complex that is going to, you know – you know, throw slings and arrows, you know, they're going to have to suffer a lot a lot for it. Uh, we saw a little bit of that with the standalone income tax cut, just the straight bill, which Conwood scored and weighted it pretty heavily. It was $95 million tax cut, bringing that top rate from the uh, 6.9 down to 5.9. Eventually, we have to say eventually, because we're going to get taxed with the internet July 1st and then the gas tax in October. So that's immediate. But you did have traditional roles all of a sudden. You had a super Republican majority legislator acting like a super Republican majority legislature, and you had the Democrats, you know, saying that millionaires and billionaires, you know, from Barack Obama need to pay their fair share. And that was at least refreshing, but I just wish we would have had more of it. Absolutely. But when you look at on our our scorecard that that's released today, uh, yesterday, and you look at the bills that Conduit 
supports. I just want to give you a few of those so yep. that our audience can judge for themselves as to how radical we are. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we support the income tax cut that you mentioned, the sales tax cut on used vehicles, the um, fee for service for Medicaid expansion as opposed to paying the insurance companies the premiums, whether someone uses the policy or even know they have it. Uh, we supported expanding the scope of practice. Uh, Several, several of those bills, actually three of them, uh, protecting free speech on college campus, homestead property tax credit increase without expanding um, other revenues, um, attributing those, improving the minimum wage law, small business, uh, some of those being exempt. We supported that and um, recording of all public meetings. We supported that unemployment tax cut for employers. We support school choice tax credit. We support least restrictive licensing requirements. We support transparency in county government spending. We support mm. housing design freedom. We support civil asset forfeiture reform. We support now one third of those bills I just listed passed and are now law. So who's the radical here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's 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 stuff that I think issue by issue, and that's the whole reason why the Republicans got control, by the way. It was a Democrat-heavy state, and people went door-to-door -door and started talking about issues like that, issue by issue, and the Republicans were for those things, and the Democrats were not, and that's why the Republicans got control. And, you know, here we are almost 10 years later, you know, almost a decade later when you had this big movement uh, towards electing Republicans. Uh, and the scorecard is, uh, like I said, it's, you know, it's a snapshot. It's, and it's also a tool. I was talking about that yesterday, how it is a tool for the people uh, to be able to see, you know, what their, legislate, what their legislator has been up to. Well, it, it occurs to me that the, the fundamental question is, do, do people want to know? Hmm. You know, that is the real question. You know, I don't know anybody who would argue that we have a fairly ill-informed public. For a variety of reasons, mm. but I don't think anybody would consider Arkansas, the average Arkansas voter, as being a well-informed voter across the board. You, I don't think anybody would argue that that's the case. Well, of that group, how many want to be informed, and what will they do to become informed? Mm. And that's part of the thing. You know, we, we started this thing by talking about small business, and, and that's how we, you know, frame our positions. But small business is like you. You're a small business, right? Every household is a small business. We're, you know, we're not talking Tyson Foods or Walmart here. We're talking about small businesses. There's thousands of them across the state. And even those folks are generally ill-informed. They have no idea what this government is doing in their name, and, and they have to take what little information they have time to get and what a lot of information that the establishment people, the, the status quo people intentionally feed them to operate from. Yeah. And it's a very sad uh, commentary. Obviously, on, on the, obviously a politician in their self-interest is going to put forth the information about what they did that's going to make them look the best. Absolutely. And that's not a terrible thing. Correct. You, you yeah. know, self-interest is a great thing. Mm -hmm. Right. And you're not going to go tell on yourself. Right. 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 But there's there's a, a level of misleading, and there's a line between misleading and lying, obviously. But, so, you know, there's a couple of groups down here in Little Rock, it, it occurs to me. And one of them are the, the misleaders in, uh, in, intent on a career for their own power and ego. And then there's another group that this is the best job they're, they're ever going to get. You know, they can't get a better job out in the public sector, more influential, more money, more power. You know, Bob Ballinger's on top of that list. I mean, he can't make a living anywhere else. And that's, you've got half of these people down here like that. So they're, they're willing to say or do just about anything to keep that gravy train because they're important down here. And people listen to them back home. Hmm. Now, that comment is what sets conduit apart from others. Now, we are very much in favor of big business. We like the fact that we have big business, especially in Arkansas. That's fabulous. But big business has partnered with government for the last 50 years where small business is busy just working and minding their own business. And what Joe has just explained is the impression 
that individuals minding their own business, their own small businesses, have concluded after spending about eight years in Little Rock and seeing what really happens. Yeah, well, you just got to watch and see what they do over a period of time, and it becomes fairly clear where they're coming from and what their objectives are. You, you contrast small business, and also the you know you mentioned families you know who are working and they're they don't have time, and that's one of the reasons special elections are so terrible because you know they know when they're supposed to vote and and all this stuff sneaks up on them. I don't want to get into that necessarily, uh, but the internet sales tax. I do want to talk about that in terms of small business owners, but maybe broader the the corporations because the corporate there was corporate tax reform in the small business or in the uh, internet sales tax. That's one of the reasons they got it passed this time. It was a standalone bill two years ago and failed miserably. Um, talk about that a little bit if you kind of see. Um, I mean, I'm for corporate tax reform. I, I'm for eliminating the corporate tax in Arkansas altogether. But in this case, um, not everybody has a C corporation, right? I mean, uh, most everybody, but everybody's shopping on the internet and going to be paying for this. I had published back in October of 17 in response or to assist the tax task force, a tax article. It's been I remember that. We yeah. published recently, I think this past week. And um, we, we like to, um, you know, we have nicknames for things, but we call that the bill that did pass the Walmart bill. You know, we, we say that sort of tongue in cheek, but Walmart had been a strong proponent of the Internet sales tax, saying it would help mom and pop. And um, and of course, Walmart is a C corporation. Yeah, we're all laughing. they've always cared about mom and pop stores. You know, absolutely. And, and, that's their first consideration when they decide to build in a small town. Yes, yeah. that's right. How is it going to affect the mom and pop shops? Well, just, you know, I have to get off on this when the UK would not let Walmart sell out part of their Walmart operation in in uh, Britain uh, the reason they concluded was you know this is going to hurt competition we're not going to let you sell that and Walmart's response was you're going to hurt mom and pop you know I thought that was interesting well, the thing about it is is that Walmart has zero votes in the legislature other than what they buy mm. you know and and, well, that, and just because they they try to buy doesn't mean a legislature who legislator who does have a vote they only can buy if they sell. So you know, Walmart has no votes, just like you have no votes. You've got a representative. Right. And the representatives have to be willing to see Walmart's point of view over the good of their district. Yeah. And they do. Yeah. Well, and where, where the people are left, the, the public who are small business or, you know, small households, do they want that kind of legislation? And then are they willing to support those legislators to do what they promised as opposed to the pressure that's put on them by the likes of Walmart? I mean, we're not complaining that Walmart's at the table in Little Rock. No, they it, should absolutely have that right, just like everybody else. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But the people yeah. need to understand when you're not willing to learn these things that we put out, then you're going to be ending up losing a lot of your freedoms that this country was promising when we were built so the internet sales tax passes so july 1st uh you know i got a message from a legislator uh over the weekend it was an email from spotify the music streaming service that you know his bill was going up a dollar 75 a month now and uh see somebody in the control room nodding they got a bill as well so this is all happening now and i guess my point is this is going to be a lot of money out of the pockets of arkansans and the corporations get that tax reform eventually in a couple of years. You know, that's great. Fantastic. But at, at what expense? I mean, you know, they had to put it in there to get it passed. I'm for corporate tax reform, but I'm not for tax increases. I'm not for more money coming from the people. Again, everything seemed to have to be, quote, paid for in order to in order to give a tax break. Now, now that right there makes you an ultra right wing, I guess. Yeah. If, if you think. So I'm a radical. Yes. You're an outlier. <laughs> But that's always whenever I've spoken to a legislator about, you know, how do how are we going to re reduce the size of government? I mean, how are we going to measure what good you say you're doing? In in my mind, the government has certain responsibilities, and then it's taken on an equal or greater amount of non responsibilities. They they just assumed they're responsible for you know, a building code out in the middle of the county somewhere or, or whatever the, uh, you call it. You know, it can be 
argued that roads and, and those kind of things may or may not be a, the duty of government. That would be a radical position. Happens to be mine, but uh, but police protecting the people and their rights, no question that's a job of government. Well, of these other things that could be debated whether or not it was the role of government or not, those things, if they were any good or had any chance of accomplishing or making any progress, they would have. And then they would be less need in the future. If they've ever solved a problem, the problem reduces. So your money and time and effort going towards fixing the problem necessarily reduces so that you need less money, right? So, Bringing you I mean, if you're successful at all, I don't know if you watched uh, Levin last night, but that was an excellent, uh, you know, I can tie that. Sunday night. Oh, it was Sunday night? Mm -hmm. uh, well, wasn't that last night? <laughs> it, it was. It's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, you just busted the whole operation. Yeah. So it's, okay. um, it's Monday. We pre recorded this segment. Oh, I'm so. I'm so... <laughs> no, it's okay, Joe. Go ahead. So the, 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 the time. People is, use that against us. See, they're frauds. Is that the deep state or the establishment or whatever you want to call it, the bureaucracy that's built up that is so big can never be reduced because they fight themselves and they create work for themselves? Everybody knows this. I mean, every one of our listeners today knows that mostly the job of people that they interact with that are in government, you know, the uh, DFA or DHS or the revenue office, they're not interested in being efficient and more efficient and more efficient and ending up not even jobless working their way out of a job. And that's what I tell everybody at my place. You should work. I'm trying to, you should try to work yourself out of a job. And if you're capable of doing that, I'll guarantee you we'll find something else even more valuable for you to do. Well, and the government just cannot think that way. And, yeah. and talking about a revenue neutral tax bill, which is where you were talking earlier, yeah. mm -hmm. and the, the uh, internet sales tax bill with the corporate income tax cuts. I mean, like you mentioned, the, the internet sales tax starts July, and the tax cuts for the corporate C corporations two years down the road and then with extended you get to take your losses but I mean that's seven eight ten years down the road now remember the first thing that this governor that we have now did when he came into office was trying to get rid of the prior governor's tax cuts yeah so we're not promised that those laws for those reduction in taxes will bind, still be intact you can't bind future legislators absolutely so that's another reason conduits disappointed you know I, I wish that there were corporate tax cuts and that was certainly part of our proposal but um why can't we just have the standalone corporate tax cut yeah um, we're talking with joe maynard brenda vaster taylor you can go to conduitforcommerce.org uh for more information and to get the scorecard and look at it yourself let's talk about what needs to happen from here in your opinion as, as we kind of close wind things down um what what is where do we need to go from here um given that it seems like we do have a government that's needing more revenue it seems like we're financially obligated um you know the elephant in the room the gorilla on top of the dome of the capitol this medicaid expansion we still don't know about the work requirements whether or not they're going to be reinstated uh, so what do you think where do the people of arkansas go from here I had said we need to decide how much we want to pay Arkansas for the services it delivers and um, reduce the spending, cut the taxes. You know, we've been saying that we were talking on the way down here. Uh, we've been saying that since day one. Where has that gotten us? But I look at um, Family Council, for example, and the wonderful work they've done with abortions and how abortions have been reduced and I can remember coming to Little Rock and we couldn't even get a hearing. We couldn't even get our experts an opportunity to testify. And now Arkansas has had, we're leading the country in, in reducing abortions in Arkansas. And I'm hopeful that the people can be educated the same way they were with abortions about spending and how it steals the freedom for government to grow, our personal freedom shrink. And as we educate more people on that, I cannot help but believe that Arkansas will raise the flag and lead in that too. It just It's just not happening now, but I don't want anybody to give up. Joe. I'm, I'm a little less optimistic than Brenda on this matter. I, I think the, the struggle 
and the disappointment for me is that with with a so-called conservative or a Republican, you it's it is hard to share the same definition of a word, let alone have an honest conversation. And that's been the struggle from my perspective is there is no honest discussion to be had. I mean, we're not worried about the smokescreen of those boogeyman Democrats over here. They're not relevant at this point. So if, if you can't get what you say in plain words, you, you want to accomplish done with this kind of a majority, then I don't see a time where you could get it done. And along the way, they're, they're ruining the brand of the Republican party in a, in a lot of ways, fulfilling exactly what a progressive would say is wrong with a Republican, you know, don't vote for a Republican because X, Y, and Z. Well, with the dishonesty that we see from leadership in this state Mm. and the actual actions and the result of the actions that they are taking, they are exactly what the progressives would say they are. We've had real quick. I, I would like to get you to comment on this. So we've we've had uh, uh, legislator after legislator on admitting that more money is going to be taking fr- taken from the people and given to government as a result of this last session. Although I I have a feeling that there are those in leadership that would somehow say no, your math is wrong. Oh, absolutely. And that's what kind of you're talking about the smoke screen. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. And I you know I hate to be like this, but the, everybody comes out and says, well. You know, the FBI rank and file are good people. It's the leadership. Well, the leadership can't get away with it without the passive cooperation of the overall body. And and that's a problem. You can't even agree on what a word means anymore. Yeah. But I think that there's hope in these uh, perspective of the next two election cycles. Definitely. We have the presidential election, the primaries coming up, and uh, not so much 2020, but in 2022, the state of Arkansas will have its constitutional offices uh, up for grabs. And those primaries, I'm hopeful that the Republican Party will have grown up and will at last allow disagreement in their committees to be discussed openly and honestly. And I believe that the material that conduit produces now that it will produce in the future will play a key role in those discussions because no longer will the governor be able to call and keep one person from being able to have a voice. That's a good point. The freedom of speech <laughs> got to be upheld in these county committees in the, in the debate. Yeah, and I, I don't think we've ever maintained that we're the, we're the only, we've got all the answers or we're the only people that are right. We've never had that position. But just you know, being honest in a in a discussion, for example, you'll see some of the legislators going around to county committees, and they'll they'll talk about the good stuff, but they'll omit clear bad stuff that they help make happen. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Well, we'll continue the conversation, continue the discussion as things go, uh, as things move forward and progress, and. It's always great to talk to you, Brenda and Joe, and, and thank you guys for we coming on this morning. We appreciate you, Paul, and your great work. So you keep it up. Well, you guys, you guys keep it up, <laughs> folks. This is Conduit News. Uh, go to conduitforcommerce.org and get the scorecard today.